everybody, and welcome to another episode of Design to Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell, this is Ryan Parr, and we are two movement specialists here with Fluid Health and Fitness. Today we're going to go over the topic stenosis. Stenosis is a narrowing of the spinal canal that can lead to impingement or pressure on the spine or the spinal cord, and that can lead to pain and tingling and radiating pain down the legs and in other areas of the body. Normally you're going to feel this issue or this condition around the neck or around the lumbar portion, the lower portion of the spine because these are normally areas where we have more mobility and the joints start to collapse in on each other. Now because of that, it's very important that we understand how to manage the symptoms or reduce it and exercise is a critical part of that equation. So today we're going to show you five techniques to help you get through this process. Now we're going to go into specific orientations around each of these elements, give you more information, but you don't have to do that. If you want to skip to the very back of the video, we're going to have it condensed with all the variable selections in terms of sets and reps and a smaller version of those video orientations at the bottom. So go ahead and jump there. If you have questions, you can always reach out to us at adminfluidhealthandfitness.com or you can uh, read the topic that we go over tonight in a blog form in the description below. There's a hyperlink there, so make sure to click that. If you like the information, as always, go ahead and hit subscribe so we can get this information to you on a regular basis. On that, let's get right to it with a release of the quads and the lats. That's why we got this. Let's get to it. All right, so our first myofascial release, active release, is gonna be on the quads, which is muscle that runs down from the hip down towards the knee. We're gonna use this fluid fascial ball. It's a five inch ball that works perfect uh, for getting into the muscles in the quad. Yeah, so basically we just need it right above the kneecap. You're gonna go up about two or three inches from the kneecap and you're gonna use your body weight to compress the quad muscle between the ball and the actual femur. Then we're gonna go through an active release by bending the knee. This is gonna to help to break open the collagen cross bindings and help to release any chronic tension that would be in the muscle. So to do that, go ahead and lay down on the ground. You're gonna place your leg right on the ball. I'm supporting my body weight on the same forearm that the ball is on in that side of the body. And then I'm gonna cross brace with the leg on the opposite side in that abduction. Now the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I keep my chin tucked so I don't let my neck go into hyperextension. It helps to support the shoulder. I'm gonna stay on the ball and hold it there for about 30 seconds or so. And again, if you ride up the ball as you bring it up towards the hip, you'll find a tender spot and you're gonna to wanna to sit on that spot. We're hoping to release the tension in the quad because this is gonna pull the pelvis down and compress the back, creating excess lordosis or arching of the lower back, and that obviously leads to that issue with the stenosis. So we're just gonna hold it there for again 30, 60 seconds. After it starts to subside or relax, I'm gonna to start to bend the knee gently, pulling the pressure of the muscle up to the apex of the ball or where you would feel if there was a collagen binding or a fascial bind, we would pull it right up to the apex of the ball and then slowly let it come down and then sink in deeper to the muscle belly. We would go through that cycle while breathing out as we bend the knee and then breathe in as we let it drop down about six times or so for roughly about two minutes of time under tension to help let those muscles go. Once we did the one side, we would do the other. And remember these muscles, when they're tight, they have an influence on pulling the pelvis down. And when the pelvis goes down, pulls into the spine and creates compression. And again, posterior shearing force of the vertebrae or on the vertebrae, so we're gonna wanna reduce that. So make sure to get both sides. You're gonna wanna spend again about two minutes on either side. Then we're gonna get into our next one, the lats. Another muscle group that does impact the mobility around the, the rib cage is the latissimus dorsi muscle. It's a big upper body muscle that pulls the arms down towards the midline of the body and internally rotates them. So this does have an impact on the spine functionally. It does help to support the lumbar spine and it actually, when tight, can pull the arms forward and then lead to excess rounding or kyphosis, C curvature of the spine. Obviously that again puts more anterior force on the vertebrae, on the front of the vertebrae, and that again can lead to that issue with stenosis. So we're gonna to try to open up those muscles, get more length out of them, and help to get the shoulders back to where they belong in their natural anatomic position. So to do that, Ryan's gonna grab this foam roller. You're gonna need a foam roller. He's gonna lay on his side, and remember the lat is a big sweeping muscle, and then he's gonna lay on the roller and compress it 
again, between the rib cage, the muscle between the rib cage and the ball. Now, if it's too tender, well, maybe, again, try to reduce some of the load by flexing down a little bit. But what he's gonna do is he's gonna pull his pelvis under, he's gonna support his spine, and by doing that, that's gonna actually pull that muscle into a stretch. It's gonna go into flexion of the lumbar. Now, with that, do you feel a little bit more pressure on the lat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's right on the apex of the roller, and it's right underneath of his scapula. So he'd be on the bottom ridge of the scapula, and he's rolling in medially on the rib cage or thorax until he feels kind of a bundle, or again, a sensitive spot, or what would be considered a trigger point, or a fascial bundle. So he's gonna stay on that sucker, and you're gonna do the same for about 30 to 60 seconds. The goal is to, again, pull onto the connective tissues, get the muscle fibers to relax, the muscle spindles to lengthen and let go, and then he's gonna start flossing his arm up and down by bringing the arm overhead. So he's gonna breathe out to anchor the spine, and concurrently he's gonna draw the arm into flexion and externally rotate, or what would be called supinating the palm as he draws the arm up. It's gonna be contrary to the muscle action. So as he breathes out, he lifts the arm up, draws it up overhead, and, and goes back to his base. He's gonna do it nice and slow as he does this. Notice that he's supporting his head with his opposite arm. And he could even maybe even go into a deeper flexion in the lumbar. Breathe out, pull the ribs down, pull the arm overhead. Okay, just like the quad, and good job, right? We would do that for about six to 10 cycles. Make sure to breathe out gently and slow. It's gonna help with diaphragmic engagement, getting the ribs down and stable. Make sure that they're nice and anchored so that the stretch can happen from the lat as you draw the arm overhead at the attachment point of the shoulder. And that should help to open up some freedom in the shoulders and also help to reduce that excess curvature. So stay on it, both sides, again, about two minutes, and then we're gonna get into our activation. And this has to do with the deepest abdominal wall or abdominal muscle, the transverse abdominis. Let's get right to it. This next one is a pretty important exercise for everyone, whether you're dealing with stenosis or any other condition. It's the engagement of the deepest muscle of our abdominal series or complex called the transverse abdominis. See it almost like a girdle that connects your spine to your pelvis and the sacrum, and it helps to maintain lumbopelvic hip stability. Basically, it aligns your pelvis with your spine and holds everything together. A lot of us don't have the capacity to engage it because we've never been taught how to do it. So today we want to show you how to go through the process of engaging the muscle in a basically four point position, upside down or inverted, which is going to help to facilitate the muscle because of the natural stretch reflex of gravity and the weight of your organs pushing down onto it. So we're going to have Ryan get down into a four point stance. To get set up, you would stack your knees right up under your hips, your palms would be right under your shoulders, and you're gonna to try to start with a neutral spinal alignment. Neutral would be roughly 30 degrees of a concave curvature at the tip of the pelvis up to the rib cage. Now the goal here is to maintain a neutral alignment in the ribs and in the lower lumbar portion of the spine so that we can condition the muscles to suspend it and hold it that way all the time, thereby taking off the extra pressure that we would feel from distortions or compression. So Ryan's gonna start by breathing in deeply through the rib cage. He's already upside down, so gravity is forcing his abs to stay on. That's gonna hold his rib cage in a neutral position. He's gonna breathe in deep and expand through the thoracic. And as he does that, he's gonna dome the, the, the spine just subtly, rotating the pelvis under gently. And then he's gonna breathe out, flexing the abs against gravity and the extension of the spine. So what he's doing is he's using his breath as an active respiratory system to encourage or engage the abdominals as the hips tip under. That would be contrary to gravity. So he's breathing in, expanding through the ribs, breathing out, and slowly letting his tailbone tuck under. The importance of this is to work within a range of motion that's pain-free, that you can control without distorting in the hips or the shoulders or the neck. You'll notice that Ryan's keeping a nice neutral neck. His neck isn't arched. Ryan, show him what it looks like if it was excess yeah, extension, so he's not arched. Notice that his hips aren't draped back too deep, so he's not flexed too deep, and he's not shifting his weight from one side to the other. He's stacked with his hips right up over his knees, and he's not creating hyperextension or hyperflexion. He's maybe reducing the extension out of the back by about 10 degrees when he goes into flexion. As he breathes in, 
subtle tilt under and then breathes out and controls the drop by flexing his abs as his hips drop down. You'll feel it almost like a stretch of the abdominals. He's gonna go through about 20 repetitions of that. Two in through the breath and the nose, breathing out, contracting the abdominals and slowly letting the hips drop down to a count of four. The controlling of the diaphragm or the breathing muscle that helps to suck air into our lungs while co-contracting our abdominals and maintaining the natural alignment on our lumbar is gonna go a long way to helping to set this position in your chronic movement patterns when you're upright and you're doing your daily activities. Very, very important again to help maintain the control and health of the spine and again to help reduce the symptoms of stenosis. Now we're gonna go right into our integration. Let's go for it. This next movement is an integration exercise. Integration just basically means that we're gonna be moving through multiple joints in the sequence that would be appropriate to maintain the force to the body. This one's called an oblique rotation, and we're using a nice little exercise band that has about two to five pounds of tension. So not a ton of weight. So main thing to remember here is that the spine has different ways of moving in different segments. Some spinal segments can flex more than others. Some can laterally tilt more than others. Some can rotate on their axis called axial rotation more than others. What we want to know is that the lumbar portion of our spine doesn't have a lot of rotation, very little rotation in fact. So what we want to do is teach the body how to maintain more stability around the lumbar and pelvis while rotating through the, the portion of the spine that's more responsible for rotation, which would be the thoracic or the ribcage portion. And that's again going to be controlled through the obliques. So Ryan's going to stand in a neutral position. You'll notice that his feet are stacked right up under his hips. He's pulling the band so that his arms serve as a lever and they're basically an extension of his rib cage. So he's not going to be moving, if at all, through his shoulders at all. So the arms are basically just an extension of the rotation that's happening right there at the beginning of his rib cage. He's gonna breathe in and rotate through the trunk without moving at all through his hips. So you'll notice that his right and left ilium aren't moving at all. He's keeping them stationary by flexing his glutes and maintaining his abdominal pressure. He's breathing in on the rotation and the breathing out as he comes back. Now notice that when he returns, he's coming back only to the point of the midline of the body. He's not rotating past it. This is going to help to engage his external oblique on this side, which would be the left side for him, and then the internal oblique on the opposite, which is gonna feed into what's called the anterior oblique sling system, a very important sling system of muscles that helps to support our body when we walk or in gait. So he's gonna breathe in again, Rotate through, get as far as he can, probably about 20 degrees rotation, maybe 30, and then come back to the base, and then he's gonna repeat. We would do this for two sets of 20, give yourself about 45 seconds between sets, and make sure that you go nice and slow. You'll see that when he comes back, he's breathing nice and controlled, and he's breathing out, getting all the air out of his lungs, by the time he gets back to the base, four, three, two, one, a nice slow return to your base. Good job, Brian. If you do this right, you're gonna feel it a lot through your midsection. You might feel it through your lower back and erectors. All these muscles are supporting your pelvis, supporting your spine, helping to keep the pelvis tucked under, center of mass right up under your shoulders, and it's gonna help you with your gait and the way you approach your environment when you're walking around. Again, make sure to do two sets of 20, and then we're gonna go into our final strength exercise and call it for the day. The final exercise is called a V-set with a pool. It's a band pool. So what we're really working on here are two sets of muscle groups. One, the abdominals that help to support the lumbar. We're going to be using gravity to engage those and they're going to use the dynamic tension of the band to pull the arms back into extension. Remember that gravity has a tendency to pull the pelvis anteriorly or down, stacking and creating pressure in the lumbar spine and it also has the tendency to pull the arms forward and create more basically convexity of the spine as we tip forward we put a lot of pressure on the spine because of bad posture. So again, two major posture issues that we want to work through. So all of the form uh, exercises prepared our body to get to this position and what we would want to do is get set up by anchoring a band low to the ground. You could tie it tied to a door or underneath of the door, knot it up and then close it on a door and then get close to the door so you have enough tension. 
So he's going to sit on his butt and he's going to start by keeping the knees somewhat bent and stacked together. He's going to pull his shoulders back into retraction, keeping the chin tucked and to keep his head up over the spine. He's going to lean back until he feels the first point of engagement of his abdominals, but not so far that his back starts to round under at the pelvis. Feel that, right? Yep. Okay, so that puts him into a fixed position where he has to engage his abdominals. And now he's going to pull the arms back behind his body, abducting the arms, and pulling back to a 90 at the elbow, extending through the back. He's got a co-contraction of his abdominals and his extensors, the muscles that pull his back upright through his back, his spine, and the muscles between his shoulder blades. Then he's going to breathe in and bring the arms back to his neutral position. Again, he's going to breathe out, pull the arms back, flex the abdominals, pull back against the pressure of his abdominals. That way he's co-contracting the front and the back muscles that support the spine. And again, coming back to his beginning position. Now we're going to be very careful with this. If you are dealing with stenosis and there is impingement in any of the, the vertebrae, that's going to exacerbate it. So we don't want to use a range of motion that either irritates it during the exercise acutely or chronically after. So you may want to start with just going into a V-sit with no weight, no band, and work with retractions. That's a really good way to start. Test your tolerance, see how your body feels the next day, and then add on the additional dynamic load. Two sets of 20 repetitions, again a nice full strong contracture, don't let the shoulder shrug or dump in, don't let your neck arch, and again don't hyper round or hyper extend through the entire back. Those are all your cues and that puts us to the end of this exercise protocol. Thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Design to Move. This one was on stenosis. That's the narrowing of the spinal canal, creates pain in the body. It's a very manageable issue and it's a preventable issue. So if you stay with it, you apply the techniques that we went over tonight, two or three times a week, you should see a noticeable increase in your posture or improvement in your posture and your movement quality. So stay with it. If you want a condensed version of it, remember we've stacked these videos into a tighter version at the end, so you can zip right to it for the next time that you want to go through it. And again, the information is listed in the blog with a written handout, so you can just read that as well. We go over these issues every week, so if you like what you're hearing, make sure to subscribe or read the blog on the topic. If you have questions, again, reach out to us at Admin at Fluid Health and Fitness. And as always, we'd love to have you subscribe so we can fill up your inbox with all sorts of healthy information. So once again, your body's designed to move, stay in action, and we'll see you next time.